Hi guys. I hope you're ready for some reindeer games because I kind of went nuts with Rudolph. <laughs> I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots and thanks for joining me today. So as you can see guys, I kind of went crazy and I did some reindeer stuff. So obviously first one here, this is a Dollar Tree reindeer cutout and then this is a this is a holiday tag from last year, but again, a Dollar Tree sign, Dollar Tree bottle cap. And uh, this was an ornament that I got this year. And so I want to use the bottle cap. We're going to take that label off. But in order just to get started here, we're going to take this little tag sign and I need to make it my own. I need to make her beautiful. So we are going to just put a very rough, sloppy, very messy um, coat of uh, chalk paint. That's a folk art home chalk paint. And again, leave the brush strokes in, leave all that good stuff in. And then I'm gonna cover the back of it with some craft paper from Dollar Tree. Um, this is just, in, it could be shipping, shipping paper, you could use wrapping paper, but I'm covering the back, which used to be the front because it's got glitter and all that stuff on it and we don't need it to show. And I'm also not going to take the glitter off and paint that either. So this is just the easiest, simple way to make it look finished and nice. And this is how I like to do it because I want everything to look nice. Like it's, like it was intended that way, even though it wasn't. So yes, there is a secret behind this, but if you peel back the paper, that's your bad. <laughs> so take uh, the sander, your hand sander, any kind of uh, sanding block after that. And to me, this gives you a very clean look, very nice. Now I did tear it a little bit, but just ignore that. Get a skewer, poke, poke the hole back through, and we're ready to start that. Now we're gonna fill in any of these little gaps that on the sides that didn't get put down the first time with uh, any hot glue. And we're ready to take the front just a little bit higher level, but not. we're not going to go crazy on it because we are going to cover it with a reindeer head. But I wanted to make shiplap lines. I've never done that. I've seen lots of people do it, and I wanted to try it myself. And it is just as easy as it looks. It literally is. Uh, I'm taking a paint stir stick that I had, and I'm just making even lines with a pencil. And then take your finger and smudge the pencil. It seems messy at first, and it looks a little nuts. It looks a little crazy. But... It literally gets the point across and it's beautiful. It, it, it's just so awesome. You guys try it. If you haven't tried it, try it because that was my first time. So we're going to put that to the side. We're going to move on to our reindeer head. So for the normal, for the first main part of the head, we are going to use country tan. It's an apple barrel paint color country tan. I like the lighter brown of it. And we're going to paint everything that is the actual reindeer head itself, this, this tan color. I chose this color because it was a lighter brown and my plan for this first one, this was a test, you guys. This was a pure test. I didn't know how this was going to turn out. So all this would have been for naught if it hadn't turned out wonderful. But we're going to also put a very light coat. We're doing one coat of white paint. Doesn't even need to be chalk paint, but this is just what I have copious amounts of is white chalk paint. Because we're going to use something else to cover the antlers with. But I just didn't know if it would show. I didn't want the brown showing through. So once you get all that done, I took the leftover paint from my paintbrush and I said, like, you know, what, let me put something to the edges to you know, give it just a little bit of something because it just felt like it was a little bit too plain and I wasn't going to dry brush over the whole thing. But if you see here in real time, I'm just taking the side of my brush and pulling it off of the edge of the reindeer. So all around the, the whole thing, the, the ears, the, the bottom of the mouth, everything. So anything that was brown or country tan, I just put a cute little edge and edging of it around that edge. And some of it doesn't show, but it's there. It gives you the point that it's, you know, that's that little bit of farmhouse, that little bit of of distressing, but it's it's not a full dry brush. Now, we're gonna paint our our ornament. Now this bottle cap ornament is the perfect size. It's smaller than the larger bottle caps as you can get in the crafter square section. But had I known what was ahead of me here, guys, this little sticker did not want to come off. It, and it, it, you know, it made me work for it. Let me tell you, I earned it. I sure did. Now that was also a fresh razor blade. So I was terrified that I was going to stab myself or slice a finger off. So I just started to pull at it. And then I had to go get the goo gone, which I don't know. Let me know. I do not like the smell of adhesive removers. They all smell like a really overly citrusy, like just, it's not even a good orange smell. It's just, it just stinks. Let me know how you get you, and also do you guys have an adhesive remover story like i could have soaked it in the in the in the sink for a while but i wanted to do this you know diy within a day or two <laughs> so anyways after a lot of elbow grease and time and my whole craft room and my fingers smelling like orange i got it off i put a coat of mod podge over the metal and we're going to use our crimson color waverly red chalk paint on this nose it took a couple coats but i did do a sloppy 
a coat around the outside of the bottle there because we're going to distress it as well. Once we're done putting on our little highlight, we're going to distress it. So I didn't go over the sides very much, but I did go over the middle about two or three times. And here is the final attempt. Now in my last video, I left in a lot of oopsies and in this one, you're going to see some as well. But for this one, I tried different approaches to it. And that the finally, I just kind of left my hand here and I just, you'll see, I literally held my hand over this nose or this bottle cap for probably almost 10 minutes, just looking and trying to get it. And I said, like, Whitney, just do it, just do it. And so it's like, okay, let me just put a dot here. Boop. And then I'm like scared. So I made a little small dot. You guys, I'm not a painter. But I'm starting to get that confidence, which is which can be dangerous because then you go into your next project thinking that, you know, I'm going to be selling my art projects for thousands of dollars. Yeah, no. Mm -mm. But, you know, I did a line and a dot and I couldn't have been more proud. Like I texted my sister. I sent pictures. I went and got my husband and said, look what I did. I was overly proud of my four dots and two lines. Let me tell you. <laughs> And it's, just, again, it's that fear of the unknown. You don't know how to do it. And then you're very critical of your own work. But at the same time, if you're admiring someone else's work and they tell you, this is the easiest thing in the world. Trust me, it comes to you. I, I, I'm starting to trust people because I've told people that as well. Finger bows, for instance, I could not master them forever. And even now I still kind of mess them up a little bit, but I'm beginning to think that with just small things with painting. So I might start branching out into a little bit more with painting, but let me tell you today it was just dots and lines and it couldn't have made me feel happier. Although I did leave a mess up in there that I'm not happy with, but we'll get to that later. Once that's dry, make sure it, uh, it make sure everything's dry, including the red and the white. And then I gave it another coat of Mod Podge. So moving on now, I'm going to take this Dollar Tree stocking and I'm going to use that cute Christmas sweater pattern on the front of the stocking to cover our antlers with. I felt like this was so Christmassy and so just, it was just festive and I didn't have anything else. And I was like, I bought this stocking. I was going to do something different with it, but I was like, this would look great as their ant as his antlers. So I cut the stocking apart, save the rest of it. Cause you still have a decent amount of red felt. And then that white fuzzy stuff at the top of the stocking that can be used in, in lots of DIYs. I turned the um, reindeer over and I just used a green Sharpie cause it's the closest thing to me. And I just outlined the antlers as best I could. Now this doesn't fit 100% towards the end of the antlers, but we are going to add so much happy gobbledygook to the bottom. As far as I knew I was going to be putting, you know, green Christmas greenery and a bow and all kinds of stuff up there. So I didn't necessarily need it to hit the bottom part of the antlers, which you can see right here where I'm cutting, there's the bottom part still showing. So at this point I am now taking my hot glue, use any adhesive that you see fit. If you're a Mod Podger, there's fabric Mod Podge. You can use fabric glue. You can use regular glue, wood glue. I had my glue gun here and I just kind of put the tip of the glue gun straight flat on the actual surface. So I didn't have a large bead of glue, but just a nice, even like applied pressure to the trigger of the glue gun. And it just put out a nice amount that I didn't burn my fingers either. And let me tell you, they're on there. So then after I got it on there, I also took my finger sander and I roughed up the edges because I wanted it to look like weathered, you know, I wanted it to look like it was a little fuzzy and frayed. And I felt that it, it added just a little bit. Now you might not be able to see it too well here in, in the video, but at the end, maybe I'll get a closer up uh, view uh, from a, from my phone when I do the, the phone, this, the, the slower rendition. Uh, to see how the little, the, you know, the, the rough tough edge on those antlers really makes it, really makes it look cute and cute and country. But now I needed to add these tumbling tower blocks or Jenga pieces from Dollar Tree to give the bottle cap something to adhere to. Otherwise, you're just literally going to find a way to adhere it with just the edges of the bottle cap. And I just knew that wouldn't stay on. So at that point, um, it was a little bit too high up off of the reindeer face. So I had to remove the nose that they gave me. Of course, save that because we are nothing if not craft part hoarders. So I just glued four blocks together like so. And then again, this was hot glue and wood glue. And then I'm putting that down where his nose was. And now to attach the metal bottle cap to the wood Jenga pieces, we're going to use star bond. So this is my thick adhesive star bond, but I have medium and thin as well. It doesn't matter. Just use a star bond. And then I have an accelerator that I'm putting on the bottle cap. Once those two touch, it becomes permanent. 
and you can pretty much do what you want with it. I love that stuff. So that's my guarantee that that's not gonna come off. Now, we're moving on to the eyes. Also, very scary. I'm showing you this brush set because do you see the end of this brush, um, this little sponge brush? I got them at Dollar Tree. I uh, know you get sponge brushes anywhere, but some of them are rounded. This one has the perfect flat edge. It's basically a dowel. If you look at the handles of these things, don't throw those out, guys. You can save those once you're done with the sponge part. We're going to use the handle to make two perfect dots because I know that I cannot paint anything relatively similar. Now, nothing is identical in this world. I understand that, but I just dabbed off the paint and I just kept dabbing so I didn't get too much of a splotchy look, if that makes sense. And I made two dots and I called it a day. I cashed in, I passed go, I collected my $200 and I left because I wasn't going to mess up these eyes. <laughs> and then here I grabbed a dotting tool or a stylus. Um, I call it a dotting tool because that's what I use to put dots on my fingernail for nail art. And I just added two white dots and I was like, oh, I got the pupils right. And this guy's looking so cute. And I'm literally blowing myself, my own mind right now because I did not think it was possible. And then here I'm gonna practice some eyebrows. Now, full disclosure, I had pictures of Etsy and Instagram and other people's stuff off to the side that I was trying to watch. Also, two people who I admire have also done these things before that I've seen in YouTube videos. Look how cute it turned out. I was just so excited. Uh, that would be Crafty Kathy and then also Sammy with Unicorn Dust Designs. They have both done these exaggerated noses on um, reindeer pieces with like um, scrap wood and things, which I'm gonna end up doing more of that too in this same video. Stay, stay, stick around guys, there's more. And I will put both of their videos in my description should you wanna watch them. So I had that inspiration to go with, so I was watching the way they did the eyes. And then I also looked up a lot of pictures on in, uh, Pinterest and Etsy and, and Instagram, and I was able to see what I could see fit and what I liked off of all the eye, eye options. And I couldn't believe that I did it. I was so proud of myself. <laughs> So now that I talked through all that, I used a combination of wood glue and hot glue to attach the reindeer to our tag. And then I had to clamp it because obviously we all know everything from Dollar Tree is never not warped or turning the wrong way. So the antlers don't stick down, but I actually like the 3D effect. But I did have to clamp down our reindeer so that he actually sticks to the tag. So I let that sit for about 30, 40 minutes before I took it off. And then once we were done, I put the clamps back on for it to sit overnight. Um, now also I put a tag, I put just a piece of jute twine at the top just to replace the hanger. And now, uh, as we go forward, we're just going to add our greenery and our bow and all our, our, our cute little Christmas accoutrement. I love, I love doing this stuff. This is like making a small little arrangement and see, after I put these things down, I'm kind of bending them so that they're all kind of weird and wonky and, and a little bit of crazy. I love the way all this turns out. And again, I keep looking at this face and this nose and I don't believe that I did it because this is something that I would easily buy in a heartbeat from another artist. People who can paint, in my opinion, have a very wonderful talent because it's not something that I possess. And I will buy painted, hand-painted items from people in a heartbeat because it's a gift. My grandma, my grandmother was a drawer and a painter. My sister has that ability to do it. I kind of miss that boat. My, my talents lie elsewhere. You guys see what I do, <laughs> but I love it. And I still can't believe I'm looking at this and I'm just so happy. So I had some, some ribbon choices I couldn't decide on. I decided to go with the red ticking ribbon here because I think it's very farmhouse and it, it looks good with the, with the, um, pa the pattern in the antlers that we used. And I, I just, I loved it. So I just, I just went with it. And then also that's a Dollar Tree burlap ribbon that I got at Crafty Square section. I just cut two pieces, um, with the burlap, I made a loop out of it and pinched it in the middle. And then with the ticking fabric or the tip, the ticking stripe ribbon, I just, uh, made an awareness ribbon shape and then pinched it in the middle and then tied it with jute. You guys saw that again, I jibber jabbered through it because I'm just way overly proud of myself. I used a wooden snowflake sticker from Dollar Tree and put that in the middle. I left it natural. And now these cute little curly Q things I'm adding is actually a tip that I got from Tracy, um, uh, from Country Designs and from by Tracy, she's a very, very, very talented artist. She buys, um, also, also I did too, you go to Hobby Lobby and you get a long garland of nothing but those white berries. And you can piece this garland out for so many projects that it's such a great idea. Of course, I got it back when there was a, 
Oh, actually, not with the coupon. I got it when it was, I think, 40% off. They were doing 50% off garlands. And they have that garland year-round. It's not a seasonal thing. So I took some of that, put that in his antlers. I broke one of my other snowflakes when I was trying to put that in the front of his bow. So I just tucked the broken piece back behind so it's kind of like a double snowflake thing. That way we're not wasting anything. And I don't have another piece because my junk bucket is getting full. And then I'm adding a couple berries here and there just for filler, just to hide some some empty spots and gaps. And then I felt like it needed one other piece of some other type of greenery, not just the pine that we put into the into the back of the bow. So I grabbed these pieces. This is like something from spring, I think, from Michael's. But just take a peek if you have eucalyptus or boxwood, any other type of greenery that's complementary to that. But I wanted it to have kind of like white tips on it, like it had a little bit of like snow or frost on it. And I just kind of pushed push those in and tuck those in around the bow. And I couldn't be happier, guys. I still am pinching myself when I look at this guy every day. I was so afraid that it wouldn't turn out, but look how cute it is. And look, if we get close enough, I'll show you. First off, there's the bottle cap. You can see that I have a coat of Mod Podge on it. But if you get close enough to the eyes, you can tell that I used something to stamp them, that it's not hand painted. It's not a brush stroke. But I was so scared that I was going to mess it out because obviously if I wanted to take it off, it would have been a whole ordeal to repaint that country tan because it's a lighter color and the eyes were black and it would have been a big, it's kind of like if you mess your makeup up in the morning and you know that if you get that eyeliner crooked, then you got to take everything off just to end because then you're trying to get like a cotton swab out and you're trying to get underneath your eyelashes and then your eye starts watering and it just looks like you've been crying on just the one side of your face. It's just, that's what I was worried about with this. If I'd have to take that paint off and restart on the eyes, it would be like when you miss your makeup up in the morning, be like, today is not going to be a good day. I should probably just stay home. <laughs> so anyways, you guys let me know. I'm so overly happy. So because of that, I made three more. So here's our second one. When I saw this in my stash, I thought, what a wonderfully exaggerated nose and we're gonna make it square and we're gonna make it look crazy. So this is my comical, or we could say whimsy. Uh, this is my comical little guy here. We're gonna do the same thing we did with the first tag, except this tag is not a background. This tag is gonna actually be our reindeer. So um, instead of taking all this off or soaking it, we're gonna make it the back. So I'm gonna once again, place it down on that brown shipping or craft paper and then just do a rough cutout. And then we're gonna use our finger sander to get a really smooth, clean edge on it. So it looks like it's a covered picture, like it was intended that way. Maybe even a little bit of a professional framing type deal going on the back there with that brown paper. I love the way that looks to me. It's very clean, it's very neat and tidy. And I like it. So I do this with a lot of my items that have glitter or, or pieces you don't want seen. I cover it with the green, or the green, with the brown, with the brown paper. Now, we flipped it back over. And don't forget to pop your hole back through because we are going to put the jute twine back through there to hang it by, should you choose to hang it. But all these can be shelf sitters once you're done with them. So now, for the base of this of this reindeer, we're going to make this one a dark brown. I chose a little bit different to go a different direction on this one as far as the colors. So I painted this one a dark brown and we're going to use white paint for the eyeballs and black for the pupils. You guys have to let me know. I kind of made this one a little bit crazy because obviously I wanted to do it differently than the first one but I'm not too confident with how it turned out. You guys have to tell me what your thoughts are. Again, we're gonna use our crimson chalk paint from Waverly and we're going to cut, uh, I'm sorry, we're gonna paint the square that we pulled off of the front of our little chalkboard sign there and we're gonna paint it red. Now this took many coats. I'm not gonna even, I'm not even gonna sugarcoat it for you. I think this, I think I only put three in here, but I think it probably took five. And that's just because I think the Waverly is just a little bit thinner of a paint, but we got it to be a solid color. And now for this nose, because it's a different shape, I'm gonna do a funky little design at the top. I'm going to use this Crafter Square white paint pen that I got at Dollar Tree. And I'm just gonna use some random dots and lines. I'm not gonna do like the perfect little, like it almost look like a semicolon or a comma. I'm not gonna do that, but I'm just gonna add a little bit of highlight at the top. Now I had to go over it a few times because the red paint was coming up off, off of the pen. And I use that pen again going forward in my next, uh, in my next two guys that I'm gonna show you. Um, but you do have to go over it a few times, let it dry in between, and then just kind of go over it with a steady hand as much as you can. Remember, imperfections are what makes it cute. Now here's where I'm saying it just kind of went just a little bit off, off, you know, I went a little, a little askew on these eyes. I'm using the same handle on the same premise, and this time I did white eyes with black pupils. And I was like, well, if I put the pupils really close together, we can make him look cross-eyed like he's a little nuts. <laughs> 
<laughs> they make him look like he's a little bit, you know, a little bit happy. Maybe he got into the, you know, holiday eggnog early. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then I was like, let me add these weird little eyelash looking things that I saw. I saw this on Etsy or Instagram or somewhere. I saw a picture of somebody doing some hand painting. They hand painted something. And I was like, that's cute. Then I was like, well, the black doesn't show up. So let me go over it in white. And then I started to make a little bit of a gray mud because I didn't let the black completely dry. But I said, you know what? I'm going to leave it. And guys, I, I was trying my hardest to not take it off and start over because I wanted you guys to see, I'm not happy with the eyeballs on this one, but I think once it's done, the focus that I'm, fo you know, the imperfections I'm focusing on are not as apparent. So I become more and more okay with it. You guys let me know your opinions. I think you guys are all going to tell me the same thing, that it looks great the way it is. So I have to quit talking through this. Now, these little pieces I'm showing you here, this is back from a Halloween project I did a couple videos ago where I bought these pumpkins from Dollar Tree and we took the burlap off of them. Uh, so I'm reusing these pieces. I had originally saved them because I saw like the petals of a poinsettia, which I can still use. I think I have a few left over, but I end up using these on these guys as our ears. So watch when I push, uh, push these down. Don't they look like perfect little reindeer ears? And they're already the right shape and they're already frayed and they look a little crazy. So these little picks here are berries that I got at Michael's many years ago, but you can get these berry picks anywhere. You can also look for them and get them at, at Hobby Lobby as well. So I'm just leaving them as they come and I'm only cutting off the longer part of the stem. And we're going to glue these down and then also use some staples. So, cause I wanted it to be a little bit more solid. So I'm gonna put hot glue down first thing. I kind of noticing I'm putting these antlers at a diagonal. And then I'm gonna take these pieces of these uh, burlap from the pumpkins I had, and I'm gonna staple those down as well. Now I'm sticking them onto the sides of these stems of berries. So it's getting a little bit of glue on it, but that's obviously not our main, uh, that was the main construction to keep it uh, secured onto the tag. So now I'm gonna take a decent amount of some raffia and I'm just gonna make a really big bow. I just gathered it into my hands and I'm taking another piece and wrapping it around the middle. And it wasn't enough to hold it. So you're gonna see me grab a piece of twine here and then I'm gonna tie that in the middle. So I literally have just a, imagine that you're tying a cord up in the garage cause you're done with an extension cord or the cord of a vacuum or a shop vac or something. That's how I did that. Just pull the cord together like you're wrapping up a cord and then put that down. That is now your messy raffia bow and it looks perfect. And it's also the easiest way to not care <laughs> and it will turn out beautiful try to put less focus in it. And I'm, I know I'm saying that to you and that's why I'm saying I'm trying to sit here and accept these eyes, but the longer I look at it, the more comical it becomes and the cuter it is. And it's the easier way for me to accept what I think was an imperfection. Now, same premise as the other bows, we're going to make an awareness ribbon shape. And this is a really cute burlap ribbon that I have with a white and red uh, corded edge, which was really cute, but I did have to use a lighter on it to keep it from fraying. And this was from Michael's uh, probably a year or two ago. And I just found some red and white, you know, just make, then here I am using my, um, using my, my fire to melt the edges of those cords. And of course I needed to add some greenery. So I just grabbed a random bush that I bought at Hobby Lobby a few years ago. And I'm just clipping off pieces of, you know, evergreen since I want there to be just a little bit of an accent. I'm going to use an imbalance number. I'm just going to add a little bit of here and a little bit of there. Nothing has to be even, don't have to have two and two or three and three, you know, I think on one of them, I ended up putting three somewhere. And then of course I'm gonna grab some of these Dollar Tree mini pine cones. I also have another bag that I got at Hobby Lobby, I think a few years back as well, but you really can't go wrong with the little mini pine cones. And now I'm adding uh, pieces of another spring bush because it is a complementing green with some white ends on it. I've just cut those off at the ends, not necessarily where the stem is intended. I cut them off at the ends of the actual plant itself. And I just tuck those all behind the bow there. So you can kind of see just a little bit of the white on that green. And then I added a pine cone to the middle of the bow and I couldn't be happier. I love how it looks. It's very comical to me. It's almost like, um, you know, it looks like something from one of the Disney movies or he's just like a little bit of a crazy, crazy animal. But I mean, I love these exaggerated noses, guys. It just makes it so Rudolph. So it just screams so crazy to me. Now, again, I'm not too happy with those little eyelashes, but on the next set I'm about to show you, you're going to see I did the same thing in black and I think that one turned out way better. But it was also because I stopped focusing on trying so hard and I just did it and it turned out great. But this one I'm leaving this way because I think it makes him look just cute.
crazy enough that it's it's cute. You guys let me know what you think. This one also, you can't tell it's a tag anymore, but I'm fine with that. So again, we used berries for antlers, some leftover pieces of burlap for ears, and I couldn't be happier. Now, our last two guys, I'm gonna do them in together because it's the same premise. This is Dollar Tree Wood. One of them says, uh, let's see what it says. This one is a wood plank board, and then this one says craft wood. I got both of these in the crafter square section at your Dollar Tree, wherever they throw all of their wood in a messy pile, and then it gets going, you know, monsters decide to stick their little fingers in it, and it gets all messed up. Just find some rectangle pieces of wood. And you're gonna see here in a moment, once we're, we're getting into this, that the bigger one falls apart. So I'm gonna take my antique wax from Waverly and I'm gonna use this on the actual raw wood. Now I love the way antique wax looks, but you do have to be careful. Sometimes I've been told and I've seen the wax may keep things from adhering. So in this instance, I'm using hot glue and some other items and staples and all that. So we're good to go. So I stained the tops and the edges. I didn't do the backs of anything. And I did both both of the planks in the same color. I love this color. And also I knew that the black paint I wanted to use for the eyes would show up well. So I only did a couple coats, but then make, making sure it's kind of like spread out evenly. I don't like when you can see like splotches and stuff. So then once we're done, I'm gonna take my hand sander and I'm gonna go at the corners. Of course, we need it to look a little weathered. We need it to look a little farmhouse. You have to add that in. Now see what happens here while I'm doing this one and I'll slow it down once it actually happens. I'm just doing the edges here. Now you see the, the wood starts to split on its own grain. So I was like, oh no, what are we gonna do? <laughs> So I tried to keep continuing to see how bad it was, but it really was splitting very badly. So I went and grabbed some painter sticks that I got from Amazon. These are in my Amazon store. They're just sticks, guys. They're not anything special. They're thin wood sticks. But um, I cut them to, I, I got two of them and I cut them in four pieces. And this is going to basically be our back and our reinforcement. So I added four along the way with a combination of hot glue and wood glue, and then I used my staple gun to go across the split. So if the split's going vertically, I'm supporting it going horizontally. And at this point, these four sticks made her so solid that I wasn't worried about it anymore, and you couldn't see the splits from the front. So again, we are happy campers, happy crafters, and we're moving on. So while all that's sitting off to the side and I let the wood glue dry, we're gonna take our noses. Now, this first nose on the left that says Bloom and Grow, that is a wreath charm that I got at Dollar Tree. And you'll see how this one looks perfect on that size plank. And then this is a marmalade jelly jar that I had, a Smucker's marmalade jelly jar that is like, you know what? I have the lid to it. I'm gonna put something in the jar eventually, but I don't need the lid. So we're gonna use the lid for that for our second nose. Look for your items that you find. I've had this in my stash for years because I'm strange and I save jars. I mean, I went through that in one of my one of my live streams and I showed you guys my embarrassing amount of stuff that I have on my table that I've saved. So in any event, I put a coat of Mod Podge on the, on the lid because it's metal and I'm filling in the hole of the wreath charm with some hot glue. I'm gonna actually use that to my advantage even though there's a hole in it. We're gonna put the hot glue on it, let the hot glue dry and I'm just gonna kind of scrape it off and then sand it flat. And then when we paint it, you are still gonna be able to see that there's something there, again, with the crimson Waverly red chalk paint. You are gonna be able to see that there's a hole there, but we're gonna use that as the highlighter. So you'll see in a, in, in a moment once I'm done putting this. Again, you'll see here once I put this coat on it, you can blatantly see through that. So again, it took a few coats for both of them. I did not put all of the coats in here because if you've seen me paint, I'm trying not to induce boredom. Or, you know, I, I want to keep you here, so I'm not gonna have you watch me paint the whole thing over and over and over again. But they both took probably three or four coats, just letting them dry in between. And then of course, now that they're dry with the metal lid, I am putting another coat of Waverly, or not Waverly, <laughs> I'm putting another coat of Mod Podge on the top so that it's, um, that it's dry and it won't scratch off. So you can now fill in the back of the lid because we, again, we need more surface area to touch our little reindeer face. So I'm putting more of these tumbling tower blocks or Jenga wood pieces, whatever you wanna call them. Also again, with the star bond, this is the best stuff in my opinion that I can find that will work on metal or plastic and glass. So I'm using the thick, I'm using the thick right now because that's what I have open. I have thin and medium, I have all of them. I bought a little starter pack from star bond, it's great stuff. So now that I've used that, I put the accelerator on one side, the glue on the other, it's a pretty solid piece. And then I'm showing you how flat it is. We're ready to move on to our little highlights on the nose. I'm using the same chalk paint marker that I got, but you'll see me kind of go off to the side a little bit 
and dab it off because the red paint was coming up off the marker. So I didn't seal it. That might have been the problem I'm having on this one because the chalk paint was coming off on the marker. But then on this one, I didn't really have a problem. But again, it took a few coats because the paint on the marker was a little thin. So I just kind of dab at it and then go back at it. But you have to let that paint marker dry first before you go at it or you'll just scratch through it just like you would a normal paint. Now, the paint is dry. We are ready to attach them, but I haven't attached any of the noses. When I get ready to do the eyes, I set the noses where I think they're gonna go best, and then I put the eyes in there because then if I've messed something up or I move an eyeball around, we have room for you know adjustment. So here I am again, just going at it. I kind of wasn't as afraid, obviously, as my first one. And then I'm twisting the handle just a little bit, and a couple of them are just a little bit misshapen. They're not perfect circles, but I think it, it adds to it. I also couldn't get the splotchy, the, the splotchy look to go away. So I used a very thin paintbrush and I just filled it in so that it looked more solid. I, I don't know that this even matters, but I left it in so you guys can see at least the process of what I did. In the end pictures, you guys, I don't know that you can even really see it or it matters because, you know, it's just me thinking, you know, oh, I should spend this much time filling in these little black eyeballs. <laughs> But you guys, you guys tell me what you think or have you done that? Now, here's the one where I was telling you all I did was add two little sw swipes, just two little swishies to each side. And then on this guy, the eyebrows were a little bit, I had to go over them twice. But the ones on the right, I think they turned out. That's what I, w that's what I had in mind for the, the last reindeer with the white eyeballs. Didn't turn out, but the execution on this one just made me so happy. And you, you guys could see how quickly it went. That was it. That's the extent of my painting. And I, you'd act like I, you would think that I'm sitting here over here thinking I made some masterpiece mural on a wall, but all I did was do four dots and two lines. <laughs> so you guys tell me what you think. I am so overly happy about this. Like I just want to keep them up and stare at them year round because I did that. <laughs> all right. So as you can see, I've taken some regular painter sticks. I got those at Lowe's. You can get them at any Home Depot or I might even got them at Walmart. And I'm cutting them to fit because we're going to use the handle parts of the paint sticks that mostly everybody has extra lying around. If you've done paint stick projects, you have the tops of these because nobody likes to use them. I felt that the little handle part looked perfect for an antler because we need some sort of shape at the top. So I cut them to fit that I felt that they were the right length for my reindeer head. And I'm going to attach them with some scrapbooking adhesive here. It's called Ad Tech. It's a glue runner. I get it at um, Hobby Lobby. I love this stuff. It's permanent. It's, I mean, you aren't going to get that paper off if you change your mind. Just letting you know. And I attach it to some scrapbook paper. Now I'm using my finger sander once again, just like we did the backs of our other signs, just to make it look nice. I think this gives the best edge. It's also a little bit frayed, but it's, it's a good, perfect little edge. And look how clean they look. And that's how I do that as far as the scrapbooking paper is concerned. So now I'm showing you here, this was my idea for the antlers. And so now I'm going to set that off to the side. And for our smaller little reindeer here, I'm going to use a grapevine garland that I have had for a while, but you can get these. I've seen them at Michael's and Hobby Lobby. It's a grapevine garland. It's a long piece of grapevine, which I live in the desert. It's very dry here, guys. So a lot of times you may need to spritz it and get it wet. But if you have an extra grapevine wreath that's falling apart, pull some twigs off of that. Or if you have um, anything made out of grapevine, you know, there's a bunch of stuff you can make. out of. Or go grab some sticks from your yard, whatever you see fit. Now, on the one side, the, gar the garland is falling apart, but I needed to twist it together. So I'm using this pitberry garland that I got from... Hobby Lobby, which you can get anywhere too. But you'll see here, I slowed this down to show you. I have to hold these sticks together because I cut a piece off of that garland that didn't have any of the wires securing it. So it literally is a bundle of sticks in my hand. So you can do this with anything from your yard or from another project or even from just actual sticks if you bought decorative sticks. And I'm just twisting the, the pip berries at the bottom in one row and then I just kind of spiral them upwards to the top and I just tuck it around and it secures it secures them together and I am overly happy with how it turns out. So with a combination of hot glue here to hold it down, I'm also going to use my staple gun to hold that up so that when the glue solidifies, it stays there. And then also I felt the need to weigh it down with a bottle of chalk paint <laughs> because that's how my mind works. I'm like, oh, this, this needs some, needs a paperweight. What do I have near me? You know, small children, doesn't matter. Grab something and sit it on top of it. So here, now we're going to attach our other antlers on our bigger guy. And we're using hot glue and wood glue. 
And then now we're going to attach these ears similar to the way we did on the last one. I was playing with placement, seeing if I can make them look a little weird, a little floppy. So I ended up pinching them and kind of putting a little crease in them and then uh, doing the same thing on that side. So I kind of folded over the pointy part and then just put some creases in and then stapled them down. Once I'm done with that, I adhere my nose and the main construction of the larger one is done. Now for the smaller one, I felt that the ears were a little bit too big. So I did cut off the edges. I kept the same size in the same shape. And then I was getting kind of like a bat or a bug look. So I'm like, let me cut off the ends and let me do the same type of pinching that I did on this one. So I kind of folded them inward and I'm just using my staple gun. I went a little staple crazy guys, please, you know. Yeah, be gentle. I think we all go a little bit crazy on either glue or, or staples or something at some point in our life. I went a little staple crazy on that little one because those ears aren't going anywhere, trust me. Now. For our smaller girl, we're going to add this ribbon that I got at Michael's a few years ago. It's got a, a burlap color. It's like a beige and a red uh, gingham pattern. And then I'm gonna use this also, it's a, it's a tan, red, and green uh, twine that I got at Michael's on clearance probably a couple years ago after Christmas was over. It was a great, that's the best time to get stuff, guys. Go after the holiday and be prepared to use it the next year because some of those deals are amazing. So I made a little awareness ribbon shape, pinched it in the middle, secured it with twine, and then we're also going to just adhere that down with hot glue. And then I'm going to make a little wrapped finger bow out of the twine. So I wrap it around three fingers. And for this one, I did six times because it's a smaller project. I don't need a lot. So I only wrapped it six times. And then I secured that in the middle with more twine and I'm gluing that down to the middle of our bow. And then all these little sticks that you see me adding are pieces that fell off of the garland when I was cutting it or it came out of the bag. And that's all I've done to it. I, I, I didn't add any greenery. And, but I did find this little bundle of bells that I have had. I got this off of a, a gift or a card many years ago. I have had this in my stash for two houses worth. You know, you, you remember moving your stuff when you move from one house to an apartment to a next one and all that. I have had this for probably two houses worth of moving and I finally have added it to a project. So if you see me shaking it in the video, it's because I'm making it jingle. These little jingle bells were perfect just to add to the top of her bow. And I couldn't be happier with how it turned out. <laughs> you guys have any little weird stories like that? Like you can remember your, <laughs> you can remember your, your supplies by how long you've had them and because you know you've seen them as you've moved. <laughs> that's that's those bells for me. It has a little special meaning. <laughs> and now we'll move on to our larger one here. Now this is some ribbon that I got. It doesn't say Kirkland, so it's not Costco. I think that's Sam's Club ribbon. And it has all these cute little sayings on it. It says, Holly Jolly, Feliz Navidad, uh, Happy Holidays, Merry Christmas. And I love the black and white chalk. Looks like a chalkboard, so I liked it. And now I'm adding a light green um, ribbon that I got from craft outlet yeah craftoutlet.com and then i got some black twine to secure these in the middle the same premise as our other bows now the black two inch ribbon i literally just cut strips and i dovetailed the ends of it and right now it's a little bit too long so you will see me i will shorten it because once i get this all fluffed and i keep and i'm done fussing with it you'll see it covers up all the ears so i made those a little bit too long so i'm cutting those shorter it does kind of in my opinion take away from the wording that you can see but I still like the pattern, I guess, but I wish I could have left it a little bit longer. So maybe it wasn't the best application for this ribbon, but it still looks really cute. And then also I have a Buffalo check finger bow that I already had made, but I just cut the tails off of it so I could just put it in the middle. Now, if you want to see how to do a finger bow, I have a link in my description that'll take you to a separate video I made that slows it down. It's only a five minute video, but it's very good to refer back to if you're practicing. And uh, trust me, if you're crazy about it, but you're frustrated, it does get easier. So I just added that little Buffalo check finger bow right to the middle. And now we're going to add some extra little goodies. This is a pick that I'd used recently in just my last video for staging. It has these weird little like nubs inside of it. So I was cutting those out just so that it would look like a regular pine branch, you know, little pieces of pine. And I only tucked three of them in there because I felt like the needed an odd number. And I don't know if that makes sense, but in my mind, for some reason, the three of them seem to make more sense to me. <laughs> And then now this is a berry pick that I have gotten at Michael's many years ago or a few years ago. And I just was taking pieces off and tucking it in because I wanted a little bit of more red. Yes, we have a large red nose, but with the green scrapbook paper and then the green ribbon and the green pine, I wanted to add a pop of red berries. And I feel like this one is like the perfect little bit of green or a little bit of red. And 
You guys, I couldn't be happier. I love how these turned out and I still am pinching myself that I made these. Like, I wanna go crazy and make like 15,000 of them because I'm like, I could do eyeball dots all day long. Aren't these precious? I couldn't, I can't help it. And I'm still blown away again that I made it. It's like, have you ever come across something when you're first try and you thought, wow, I, I'm still war like I did this. Did I really make this? And I, I didn't mess it up. <laughs> and then there's times where you think I've made something that is absolutely gorgeous. And then everybody hates it. I'm like what, the, what, what happened? Like, it's so cute. Or the things that you think are horrible and then everybody loves them. It's like saying, the beauty is in the eye of the beholder. And if you do not like something, somebody else will adore it. Somebody else will love it. Also here on this nose, I like how the little highlight that I put in there almost kind of looks like a comma or a parenthesis. You know what I'm saying? I added a little bit of thickness to one side. And again, I just started playing around with it because at some point I was trying to remember Jackie from Bless Beyond Measure. It's just crafting, y'all. It's just crafting. It's if, if you mess it up, it was a dollar, but you can't mess it up to the point where you lose it because you could always paint over it. So again, unless you're like really at your wits end for time, take your time and have fun. Because at this point, when I started making these two girls here, I just started having fun with it. And it's like the nervousness and the scaredness, it, it melts away. And I, I love how they all turned out. And again, it's very strange for me to not put any greenery or any flowers or any anything in there. But again, I got bows in there. I got two bows, two bows worth. So I'm happy about it. And I love these exaggerated noses. You guys tell me what you think about these little Rudolphs. Now you can also do a black nose, so it doesn't have to be Rudolph. You could do one of the other eight reindeer or just a random reindeer in general. You could use black instead of red. And that bottle cap, that bottle cap Dollar Tree ornament was perfect. When I was in the store, I bought those together and I knew specifically that I was going to do that. Of course, this is again, after I've already seen the two videos, the one from Sammy at Unicorn Dust Designs and then Crafty Kathy's video from last week, I couldn't help it. And these people had also got inspiration from Etsy and Instagram and those places and Pinterest too. So take a look at what other people are doing and try to make things your own and just kind of throw it all together in a beautiful little mess. And you guys, let me know of your successes when you get them. And if you ever try to duplicate or, or try to do anything like this, go ahead and send it to me. I love seeing everything. All right, now I have a coffee page and I wanna thank everybody who has supported me and everybody who continues to support me. You guys have been more than, more than generous and I love every single one of you. If you're not able to support monetarily, that is never a problem. All the regular YouTube things help me just as much. If you're here, you comment, you like, you say things, that helps me just as much and I love you for that as well. And that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for joining me once again. This was a little bit longer of a video, so thank you for sticking with me. I love the guys more than I can possibly say in words. So go have some happy crafting, many hugs, and I'll see you guys in the next video, okay? Bye-bye for now.